Guys, welcome to Real Talk. Good Friday morning. Thank you kindly for joining us. This is an insider's guide to real estate across Charlottesville, the Commonwealth, and the country. It's powered by the Yes Team Realtors. They have a brand new website at the yesteamrealtors.com, which we're going to spotlight throughout today's program. We are live on the I Love Seville network for Charlottesville, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world. Today's program, we very much look forward to. The executive director of the Piedmont Housing Alliance is on set with us. Um, a local star, undoubtedly, and Sunshine Mathon. He's kind enough to join us. And before we welcome Sunshine, Judah Wickhauer, our director, why don't we go first to the two shot, and you know what I'm going to say, and say hello to the dapper Don, Keith Smith himself. <laughs> he secretly likes it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Keith Smith, how are you, my friend? Maybe not so much a secret. <laughs> I told you, uh, Redmond, yeah, yeah. someone mentioned you by the dapper Don. Yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm, no. I guess we have to keep on using that moniker now. You're looking good, my friend. Happy Thank Friday you. morning to Happy you. Happy Friday to you. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Yes, to everybody watching. So um, the gentleman sitting across the table from me, um, and, and I mean this in the, in, in the most flattering way I could possibly say it, any opportunity I get to either listen to him, talk to him, or be around him, I always learn a little bit more. I always find myself to be a little bit smarter. Um, after that. So I'm going to let you get into the formal intro into it. Uh, I guess the two things is we brought Sunshine on and Sunshine brought Sunshine with them today. So <laughs> Amen, thank brother. You. Thank That's you, That's not Sunshine. the first time I've heard that. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> we're truly grateful. It's been a rainy four or five days. True enough. Um, thank you. It's bright outside, sunshine inside. Uh, my friend, um, start with the, the who, what, when, where, and why of you, an introduction of yourself and the brand to the community again. So, uh, Sunshine Mathon, um, I've been in my role at Piedmont Housing Alliance for the last two and a half years or so. Um, had, new to Charlottesville, new to Virginia. Um, previous to that, some may know that I spent the previous 14 years in Austin, Texas, uh, working in the affordable housing sector down there, um, and also getting my master's in architecture at UT. And then before that, I lived in Portland, Oregon. Before that, lived in Vermont and a number of other places. Um, but super excited and glad to be here in Charlottesville trying to do good work. Um, we are fortunate to have you in Charlottesville. How about we segue from you to the Piedmont Housing Alliance. Give us the snapshot of PHA. So Piedmont Housing in its um, very initial form actually began in 1968 with a couple of uh, smaller nonprofits that eventually merged to become Piedmont Housing Alliance in the early 80s. Um, at its very core, since the beginning, um, affordable housing has been the primary focus, and in particular, uh, initially trying to support homeowners, uh, be to low-income families becoming homeowners, uh, trying to create opportunities for wealth building for families in the community. And actually, as of this year, um, we haven't fully announced and celebrated it yet, but we actually uh, helped our thousandth uh, home buyer in the region oh, nice. uh, buy a home. So that's, pre that's pretty awesome. Um, over the years, uh, additional work has, uh, um, has grown into the, the work that Piedmont Housing does. So we also now own and operate over 600 um, apartments, for rental apartments for um, families who are struggling to make ends meet around the community, not just in Charlottesville, but in the surrounding counties as well. So we serve both the, the urban core of Charlottesville and the urban ring around of Albemarle County, but also the other surrounding counties in the rural areas. Um, we also are a CDFI, and that stands for Community Development um, uh, Financial Institution. Essentially what that means is that we, can, we act as a lender in certain cases, and that lending has primarily taken the form of down payment assistance for uh, low-income home buyers as a gap filler trying to, to get people in homes. Kind of like a bridge loan? Mm. Sort of. Uh, it comes in as a, as a, uh, a secondary loan, so the, the homeowner still has their primary mortgage, whoever their, their lender is. And this uh, acts as a second uh, mortgage that covers uh, usually uh, closing costs and uh, fills a gap usually between 10 and 20 percent of the housing cost and sits there as a secondary mortgage with no payments due um, and in some cases gets forgiven completely after a period of time. In some cases is due upon resale of the property. But otherwise, if the, the family stays in there in perpetuity, they'll never have to worry about it. So well, I know we're going to talk about Friendship Court today, but, yeah. but I do want to chat a little bit about that subject because uh, Sunshine and PHA just helped us close. Piedmont Housing. So we actually are trying to get away from the, the PHA phrase. We're trying to move Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. And so Piedmont Housing Alliance is a long phrase. Uh -huh. So 
it's a little bit shorter to say Piedmont housing, um, but we're trying to kind of push that in general. So, kind so of like a brand refresh. And, and well, and the reason the reason is Look because if you use the phrase PHA in other communities, that often stands for public housing authority. Oh. So there's often a misconstrual of who we are because of that moniker. Interesting. I will make a note. Yeah, Piedmont housing. That's right. So we learned two things today on Real Talk. One, a thousand. Yeah. And a new name. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Piedmont well, Housing. Not, yeah. yeah, good. So, uh, but I wanted to chat a little bit about what Piedmont Housing has helped the Thomas Jefferson Community Land Trust. And I was trying to get a high five. We closed our first two yesterday. Woohoo! Congratulations. Greg Slater busted his uh, rear his tail. end. His rear end. Um, by the way, there's no FCC rules here in case you were Fair enough. wondering. Um, uh, it busted his tail, but we could not have done it without Sunshine and Piedmont Housing um, because they provided um, down payment assistance with it. And it's a, it's a pretty uh, symbiotic relationship that we have. So we're, we're excited to have it. Um, so one of the things that I was really excited about bringing Sunshine here on uh, Friendship Court, um, and I've been tracking that for, well, God, I've been here since 1987. I've been tracking what's going on there since then. Um, and what really surprised me, um, what I was, not surprised me, but because as I got to know Sunshine, it didn't surprise me, that he, we, he approaches this win together approach, right? Mm -hmm. And you did something really awesome with the residents there to help you design this, and I'd love you to talk a little bit about that. Does that make yeah, sense? It, yeah, and, um, and to give credit where it's due, that process actually began somewhat before I arrived. Oh. Um, so the Friendship Court Advisor Committee is a body of nine residents from front within Friendship Court, and those residents were elected by their neighbors within the community to represent them through the redevelopment planning process. And then there, uh, there have been six additional um, uh, at large Charlottesville additional members to bring some additional uh, expertise uh, and insight. And that um, advisory committee has been central to the design process since the beginning. Um, so although that the, the advisory committee was formed almost three and a half years ago, I think now, when I arrived, um, it was, I, I, found, I found it to be really important to not just engage with them as an advisory body, but actually as a core co-developer, um, co a co-designer. And I think that's the approach I was getting, because yeah. it, yeah. it's really, I think advisory is a poor choice of words for sure. what it really is, yeah, right? Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, it is, they are the, um, the designers of the, their future, Correct. and uh, essentially we are engaging them as a way, as a, a support mechanism to help fulfill on their vision. Um, and that has been a tremendous, uh, tremendously uh, fulfilling for me, and I think for the for the community as a whole at Friendship Court, particularly those residents there. Um, and I think one thing to to acknowledge too is that not only are they actively involved in the design of their future, um, but they are treated just like any other consultant would be. So they are actually just like the architect or the civil engineer. They're paid for part of their time uh, in addition. So we're not asking them to volunteer which often is a, a challenge for folks uh, in any situation, but particularly folks who are facing um, you know, daily financial challenges. Uh, so that's a, it's a critical part of the, of the equation. So one of my, <clears throat> my girls will appreciate this if they're watching it. One of my famous sayings is, is there's power in being heard, right? And, and this whole fact that they were chosen, they were elected, and they were being compensated for their time only produced, in my opinion, a pretty awesome product, which hopefully we're going to get to in a few minutes to talk a little bit about. But I felt it was really important um, to get that, to kick this conversation off with that, that the, to engage um, the people who we serve um, in their future. And so my hat's off to you, um, you guys. I know it may, I know you're, you're, you're taking partial credit for it, but um, I've been around it long enough to know that it didn't really kick off until you got into that seat. So thank you for doing that. So um, I'm really excited for um, the future of what's coming down with Friendship Court. We followed in the news closely. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone in the community follows it closely. It's not often we get to sit next to you. Um, how about you take a moment to describe what's coming down the pipeline there? Sure. Um, and these, just to, as a Reminder, these concepts that we're going to be talking about and the plan as a whole um, are really derived from the community's aspirations and goals for what they want to see in their, in their um, future homes. 
So one of the core concepts that the residents laid out at the very beginning was to ensure that the redevelopment process has a zero displacement impact. Um, and fortunately, uh, if you're familiar with the Friendship Court site, on the eastern edge uh, adjacent to um, 6th Street is an open green space. And that allows us to build there first. So phase one will happen where there is no existing structures, no existing homes. We'll build there first, and then when that is completed, some portion of the folks at Friendship Court can move over. We'll be building additional units as well, additional affordable housing. Uh, so we'll be inviting new community members to join that community. Once the, the, a portion of the residents move into phase one, then phase two can begin, and those now empty units can be demol demolitioned, and uh, we can build new phase two and then sequence through four phases overall. And he's showing them on screen as you're talking. Great. So if you're giving the play-by-play -play of what you Perfect. have here, um, the viewers are seeing what you're talking about. So what you're seeing right now is uh, phase one, um, where we're building a combination of townhomes and a multifamily building um, to meet different needs. And then when that is complete, then a portion of the residents in that second phase can move over and phase two can be built again with a zero displacement. And then as that sequence moves on, phase three and phase four. One thing to note as you're looking at those diagrams, if you can go to the phase four diagram for a second, He's got phase four on. Perfect. Um, There's a little bit of what you're seeing on this screen. There's about a 10 second lag, but people are seeing phase four. Perfect, thank you. Um, so phase four is currently a, sort of a, a gray blob there on the drawing, and it's important to acknowledge that that's not a parking lot. That's not what the goal is there. <laughs> um, what, what that is is a recognition that in the, uh, by the end of phase three, everyone who's currently living on Friendship Court will be rehoused. So phase four is gonna be a little bit different, but we have the time to figure that out and we haven't focused on that design yet. Um, so that's what that means. I've been around development for over three de decades. Gray blob is something new. It's a new term I have yeah, to write down. <laughs> Gray blob. I like how you something new. that it was not a parking lot. I'm learning lot. all yeah. kinds of stuff from. Because <laughs> yeah. parking is such a hot topic in this community. Yeah, yeah. 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 gray for blob. Sure. For sure. <laughs> um, I hinted at this uh, a little bit earlier on, but um, each of the phases will be introducing new additional affordable units uh, at different income tiers um, mm -hmm. within the, the redevelopment overall. And again, this is a resident-driven aspiration. Um, you know, for the last four plus decades, Friendship Court has been effectively socially and economically isolated from the rest of the community, even though it resides just two or three blocks from where we're sitting now uh, on the other side of the downtown mall. Um, and the residents want to feel uh, reconnected to the city as a whole. They also want to um, erode that historical stigma of if you have a Garrett Street address, people have an assumption about who you are and where sure. you come from. Um, and at the same time, they also want to provide the opportunity so as people uh, increase their incomes um, through whatever means, whether getting a second job or a better job, going back to school and, and finding a new career, if they are to move out of Friendship Court, if they're gonna be ready to do that, there's nowhere they can move to that they can afford in an incremental way um, within 30 miles of the downtown of Charlottesville. It's just too darn expensive. So we're building that additional opportunity for tearing up on the site so people can stay in their community, stay connected to the schools that they, their kids go to, stay close to their jobs, uh, to their social networks. Um, and so the community is really being designed um, at, on their terms effectively. So there's many things that excite me about this project. Me too. But there's this new term, maybe not so new any longer, called missing middle. And, and literally, that's what Sunshine's talking about. So what happens is, is you're at a certain, so, so I think we should define yep. tiered income, right? Yep. And, 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 and not to throw around a ton of acronyms, but they're typically based on area medium income, AMI, is that correct? Correct. So the, the right now, Friendship Court, um, residents, uh, and this is actually relatively true also for public housing residents, because Friendship Court is, is not public housing, just to clear that up, because that's often a misconception, but it does serve a similar uh, demographic of families. Can we describe the difference? Yeah, I, I think, I think like Jerry's spot yeah. on. I think that's worth okay. like a minute or two to explain what's the difference, because as a real estate agent, um, I hear this all the time. What, what, that's public housing, and and, right. and I need help explaining that. And so. even public housing, Section Eight housing, like you know, clarity on that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's going to get into the acronyms really fast. Sure. So I will do my best to be uh, thoughtful we'll, and we'll clear. We'll slow you down but, if we get confused. <laughs> um, 
but CRHA, which is the Charlottesville Redevelopment and Housing Authority, is the public housing entity in the city of Charlottesville. They own and operate all the public housing, uh, and that includes places like Crescent Hall, and places uh, South First Street, um, West Haven, all the public housing communities. Friendship Court was never owned by public housing, was never developed by public housing. It was developed initially by a private developer, but he, uh, that developer was able to acquire what's called a project-based Section 8 contract. And so the effect is relatively similar from the resident's perspective, um, but that contract is directly between the private developer and HUD directly with no public housing connection. So that contract, essentially what it does is it allows for the operation of the property because the rent, the income, the rental income that the residents themselves can afford, which and that's usually capped out at 30% of their income. So if a resident is making $1,000 a month, uh, they're going to be paying $300 a month towards their their housing costs. Um, but the and, but you can't operate a property on paying on people paying $300 a month. You can't maintain it. You can't pay the staff, etc. You can't pay the lights. So the HUD Section 8 contract covers the difference between what the resident can afford and what, the, what it costs to actually operate the property. As a resident's income increases or inversely decreases, that amount that HUD pays varies. And, and so it always stays constant from the developer's perspective um, because it's 100% total, but the portion the resident pays can vary over time. So it's, it, there's a common misconception that Friendship Court is public housing because the ratio and the way that residents pay is similar to public housing, but it has never been public housing, was privately owned. And the reason that, and it, Piedmont Housing was not the original developer, but in the early 2000s, there was risk of the private developer at that time selling Friendship Court and it being yeah. lost as affordable housing mm -hmm. in the heart of Charlottesville. So the city of Charlottesville, Piedmont Housing Alliance, and a, a national partner, a mission-driven nonprofit called National Housing Trust Enterprise, came together to buy Friendship Court to maintain that affordability over the long term. Interesting. So, yeah, a great history. Yeah. Um, and, again, something we talk about quite often on, on this show is about working together. And that is a prime example because Piedmont Housing is, is a nonprofit. Correct. Um, and it teamed with multiple, <clears throat> excuse me, multiple other entities to make this happen because otherwise it was going to be another four- not that, not that there's anything wrong with for-profit because we're in the profit business, yeah, right, right, right. but um, it, it would have been lost forever. So. What was the initial developer? Ooh. I don't know that I have that off the top of my head, honestly. Yeah, this is like in the 60s. Uh, yeah. Well, it's 78 is when it was I mean, built, yeah. um, okay. but I don't actually know that offhand. So the initial developer <clears throat> built Friendship Court as a for-profit business for him or her or the entity? So yes, so there's actually, um, it, it sounds a little crazy sometimes, but there's actually a lot of affordable housing that gets built by for-profit entities Correct. that then tap into the available subsidies to make their properties work. There's sure. several of them. I mean, uh, Carlton View is an example. Carlton View is, a, is a, a prime example of yeah, that. Yeah, so um, the land trust act as a pass-through on that, so they have to work with a nonprofit and all this that. It's fascinating. Stuff. Yeah. So back to the missing middle, because yep. that's something yep. that, that we on the ground in the real estate world here quite regularly. Um, I will give a bit of a shout out. The Regional Housing Partnership Summit is going to be in July, and we're going to actually, one of the topics that we're going to focus on is the missing middle. We're going to have folks come out from Portland and Seattle to help explain that, and hopefully I'll get sunshine to sit on a panel. But but it, it's 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 from a practical perspective. What happens is, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you have a resident. They're blessed to make more money, but all of a sudden they get kicked out of a certain program or a certain price range, for lack of a better term. And then there's nothing in the middle from the go to. It's going from friendship court to. 350,000. There's no middle. So what excited me the most about that is this stepped system. Well, right. maybe system's a wrong choice of words, but the stepped program that you would go from 30% area medium income, maybe jump to 60. Because it, it, it incentivizes, I think, folks to make more money. So I think the, the goal here is to... Um the, it's a twofold goal. One is to provide that opportunity for income tiering as people um, do uh, have opportunity to kind of increase their their um, economic mobility. Um, 
Secondly, it also provides that opportunity to begin to erode that stigma that I was referring to uh, before. So the, the goal by the end of phase four, and um, each phase will, will look a little bit different just because of the nuances of how, of the amount of land area we're talking about, et cetera. But by the end of phase four, we will um, have replaced one for one all the existing Section 8 based uh, units 150 for 150 families. That will all be replaced one for one, so they will still maintain in their modern, homes. In modern, beautiful, um, hyper-efficient, solar-powered homes. Just like we did on Nassau Street. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, that will be replaced, 150 units, 150 apartments. We'll be adding roughly 150 additional apartments at the next income tier, which essentially is serving between 30 and 60% AMI. So here's mm -hmm. an acronym. AMI stands for Area Median Income. Mm -hmm. To translate that into dollars, 30 to 60% of the AMI in Charlottesville is between, say, 25 and 45 or $50,000 a year for a household. It does very little bit on, on, based on household size uh, because the AMI does slide up and down with household size, but roughly twenty-five dollars to $50,000. And then we'll have additional roughly 150 units at the next income tier, which will be for households making, say, between fifty dollars and $70,000 a year. Um, so your max AMI will be? The max AMI will be 80% AMI. Um, and so just as a quick reference point, the average AMI in, in the Charlottesville region is $89,600 a year. So 80% of that is roughly $70,000. I'm going to pivot on you a little bit. Okay. Um, I think I know where you're going to go here. Really? Yeah. Um, so um, I'm in the real estate space. I'm in the sales space. You're sitting in an advertisement agency. Have you considered rebranding the name? Of I Friendship Court? Is that what you mean? Um, not my choice. That's up to the residents. Um, I think that's I, a good idea. I would encourage that. Yeah. Well, but hold on. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so just fundamentally, I just want to be clear, that's not the choice of Piedmont. That has to be driven by the residents. No, I, that, I has that. To, that has I to be that. Their, their aspiration. And, and we spoke a lot about that in the beginning, and I think that's a great thing. Yep. But Because but it did change, right, from Garrett Square? So, yeah. the, and there is a, so originally it was Garrett Square, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And there are actually plenty of people in the community that still call it Garrett Square. Oh, yeah. Um, back when there was uh, the acquisition, as I mentioned, when Piedmont Housing and National Housing Trust in the city kind of partnered to, to, to purchase it, and then there was a moderate rehab that was done at that time, there was a renaming to Friendship Court. Um, for many people, that, that changed. For some people, it didn't, and it stayed at Garrett Square. And I've heard um, probably seven different versions of how that name change came sure. to be. Um, some like what? Uh, some of them... Um, uh, more supportive than others. Um, you know, I've heard from some folks that uh, that was driven by residents. Um, yeah. And I've heard from others that um, that it was not. Uh, it so was a, at was the end of the day, if the residents are comfortable with it, then that's great. Well, but I, I, I'm finished. Yeah, I got it. I'll, I'll <laughs> sip my coffee and shut up. <laughs> um, but one of the questions that that was brought to the table maybe six months or a year ago is, do we want to keep, the, does, does the community want to keep the same name? Got it. And um, the, we have not gotten into details, just candidly, because the amount of time and planning that it takes to develop a project like this, from the macro scale down to the micro and designing individual units and site plan overall, um, it takes, uh, takes time. It takes a lot of time. When, and particularly with folks, even though the residents are, are paid for their time, Still, we only meet typically once a month, so there's a, there's, a, there's a limited amount of time that we, and bandwidth that we have to t tackle topics. But the name change is on the list for the topics probably okay. in the next three to four months. So um, that is not mutually exclusive to that sub to that project. Or if you want to see a developer's head freak out, ask them to name a project. Ask them to name streets. You know, this stuff we can do all day long. This is, you know, high-level stuff. What should I call it? It's like, Jerry, tell me what I'm supposed to call it. We, yeah. we can't. It's hard. It is. That is yeah. really one of the hardest things that, to come up with a name. But anyway, I, I yeah, didn't want to go down a rabbit And it's, it's one of those hole. things, too, that, you know, I, as I said, we haven't really gotten into the yeah, weeds cool. of that discussion yet, although there is explicit interest. Cool. But when we do start talking about it, it is going to have to be very, very thoughtful about balancing a future that, that the residents want to see and not ignoring the past. Um, the, you know, where Friendship Court came from has to be part of that equation. Cool. I don't know where that lands in terms of the name or how we tell that story, 
uh, but it certainly has to be part of it. A lot of people giving him some props right now. Um, we're going to relay the, the, the props. Roxanne Carter Johnston oh, yeah. says, thank you for the clarity, sunshine. You're doing a great job right here. Great hairs. We have a lot of real estate agents and watching the I program. I want to shout out here. to Roxy, too. Just she, She's on our board, and yeah. she's awesome. She's I think really you have another work. board member that's come on this program, Crystal Napier. Uh-huh. She's yep. watching she's, the she's program fantastic as, well. as we speak. Um, Chris in Crozet is watching, and he says, can you give a insight into how much time is being spent from start to finish on this project? Oh, great question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in terms of start to finish, I, I, speaking about how much time it is in the middle is, is, is probably a little bit more difficult. To, Where are to, we in the project? So the, plan, the serious planning began three and a half, four years ago. Um, groundbreaking will be, knock on wood, May or June, probably June at of this, this point, year. Of this year. Cool. For phase one. Once that groundbreaking begins, because we have this phased process and we have to ensure that phase one is complete before phase two is, moves forward, so we have zero displacement, that does mean it moves in two year cycles effectively. Um, so we start construction in June uh, this year. Residents move in by the end of 21 for phase one. And then two years later, end of 23 for phase two, end of 25 for phase three, end of 27 for phase four. Get out. So this is um, like almost 15 years, start to finish. So seven and four and a half, you know, 11, 12 years. Yes. Get out. It is and that's a doing, normal timeline. Doing this, like this amount of work in as thoughtful a way mm -hmm. as we can, it requires um, an extraordinary amount of time. Amount of time. How yep. much is this consuming your... Nine to five. I mean, you're uh, probably a I'm not seven a.m. I'm not a nine to five. Seven a.m. Yes. to eleven yeah. p.m. guy. <laughs> so I, I've sent you texts at yeah. five thirty-six in the morning. I've seen it. Yep. I've seen it with him. Yeah. yeah. Um, Is this everything you're doing here? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, but friendship court, nonetheless, is clearly the largest and most impactful um, project, not only that Piedmont Housing has ever undertaken. Um, but in, I, I would argue that the city itself um, will Maybe have seen the last 20 years. Okay, or next 20 years, you said? Who knows what the right time frame is, yeah. but a significant amount of time past future, this is going to be a tremendously impactful redevelopment. So let's talk a little about first phase, right? Sounds like we're starting at midsummer. Yep. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what's in it. Um, I've asked Judah to put up the um, first phase, and then I think you have some renderings on the product type that might be in there. He's giving us the thumbs up that the first phase is on. Okay. Um, so phase one will include 106 apartments, um, 70 or so will be in the multifamily building on the northern end uh, at the corner of Garrett and Six Streets. Um, that will be a four-story multifamily building, elevator access, because they're actually um, not, a, not a, an over, over, uh, overly large number, but there are a significant number of folks who, for whom having an elevator access and a, and a flat level floor plan can make a difference. Um, particularly if they're you know, seniors um, or other folks who are struggling with mobility issues one way or another. So 70 or so units will be there from one bedroom to four bedroom units in that building. Um, that will include the new leasing office for the entire redevelopment as well um, with some pretty phenomenal uh, ground floor um, community spaces including a game room, uh, uh, an outdoor courtyard, a whole series of things. Um, on the Southern portion of the site, of phase one site, um, they we're building, I think it's roughly 35, uh, what's called two over two townhomes. And essentially that means that they're, they're townhomes with front doors or back doors to the, to the street or to the alley. And, um, but they are one unit, one two-story unit over another two-story unit. We are fortunate and then that portion of the site is, uh, as if, you can, um, if you can picture it, there's a bowl there on the site um, where there's a low point of the existing portion. So we're gonna take advantage of that. So from the Sixth Street perspective, as you're coming out of the unit, you actually see a three-story building. Uh, on the back side, it'll feel like a four-story building. Um, but that in total, so it's 106 apartments, 46 of which will be for um, existing residents on site, and then 60 of which will be split between these other in uh, income tiers that I referenced previously. So one of the conversations on the mall is there going to be a community space that everybody can share? So the, um, let me, let me, I'll come to that. Sure. Um, so I want to say just a couple other things about phase, uh, phase sure. one in particular. So 
One of the challenges that the residents had to contend with as we were going through this planning is that if you can picture it, you know, the, the current basketball court and the current open green space. Which is are a what, soccer field, right? There's a soccer field, but there's also a basketball court. Okay. It's yeah. a combination of those yeah. two things. But those space and the garden are all spaces that are used in different ways by the community. And, but that's also where we have to build first. So we have, so we have zero displacement. So there's always a trade-off with every decision we, that the residents have had to make. Um, but it does mean that they have prioritized ensuring that that comes back as soon as possible um, in, the, in phase one. So there is a new basketball court in phase one. There is a new green space for kicking a ball around, some improved playground spaces. And then at phase one and a quarter or so is when we'll see the garden come back as well. Um, in each phase, and this is, this is actually, in my opinion, one of, uh, and as an architect, um, you know, the process the residents went through to design an incredibly well-balanced overall plan, one of their priorities was not only to have that represented, the, the, the balance of open space and play space and so forth um, in phase one, but that each phase had some component of that as they went through, and that each phase also had some townhomes and some multifamily to address different housing needs. So that, that, that is, becomes clear, and that gets to your question, Keith, which is, um, by the time we finish phases two and three, the puzzle pieces of a central uh, roughly one-acre park will be finalized. Mm -hmm. um, the goal is for that to actually become a formal city public park mm -hmm. um, that will obviously be housed within the, the, the heart of the Friendship Court community, but open to all. Um, why don't we do this? We'll thank um, a sponsor here for being a part of the show. You have two city councilors and a board of supervisor watching the program as we speak, along with two admins in City Hall. Um, we're going to give some props to Roy Wheeler Realty Company for being a part of the show. Oh, yeah. You know, we love hanging our lights there. We love Michael Guthrie. And um, if you get an opportunity um, and get on and the, he's watching. the daily progress uh, and give us a little bit of a vote, the company a vote, the uh, I, I'm sure Michael will post a link somewhere in the in the feed, but uh, a shout out would be much appreciated. And Yona says welcome. There the you wife go. Is watching. Hey, uh oh, I got to behave now. And so is Harry. Uh oh, Harry. Harry's watching. Harry's right watching. Now. Yeah. Which Harry? Uh, Harry Big Harry or little Harry? Uh, well, I don't think it's your grandson. <laughs> it could <laughs> be the grandson too. <laughs> I don't know, man. We saw a video of him. He's yesterday. pretty sharp. Oh, dude, yeah. Um, keep going. We're, we love this. I love so, this. So I, so I, I'm, I started this off saying every time I listen to him, I get a little bit smarter. I agree. And, my, and I'm feverishly taking notes yeah. here, uh, and I'm learning a whole bunch. So thank you. So another really critical component of the redevelopment is not just thinking about the housing. It's thinking about the other opportunities for interventions which can provide um, op pathways for economic mobility for the residents. Um, part of, so each phase, and we haven't figured out exactly what phases two, three, and four are going to be yet as far as this, but we're going to have some um, uh, service-related commercial space um, that will be directly relevant and responsive to community needs and aspirations. So in phase one in particular, the topic that was raised up earliest and most strongly was uh, developing a high-quality early childhood center on site. And so that is going to be part of phase one. It will The construction of that building will start probably a few months later uh, because the financing sequence is different. Um, and to be candid, we're still doing some financial fundraising for that portion of the building because uh, uh, running, um, if you think about, if you think financing affordable housing is challenging, which it is, financing high quality early childhood center where you can pay the, the employees well and provide the quality that the students need, that's just a whole nother ball game. Um, so it is it, one, of the, one of the success factors there is that um, ideally we can fundraise for that space in its entirety so that that uh, program doesn't have to pay rent. And nice. therefore it balances its ability to um, provide discounted rates for residents uh, and the community as a whole and also uh, ideally pay living wages for, to the staff, which is um, fundamentally actually a really big challenge across not just the state, but across the nation. Um, early childhood providers are often paid poverty level wages, and which creates lots of turnover, which creates class inconsistency, which sure. challenges the ability to develop programming and develop around that programming. We're trying to, um, to um, resist all those trends and develop a different model altogether. And did I read correctly that the jobs from this center 
will be offered to folks in the community? So the, the, the goal, that's one of the reasons that the residents wanted that program lifted up, is that yes, on the one hand, they want to make sure that they have high quality early childhood, for, uh, childhood care for their children so they can actually then go to work and feel like their kids are being taken care of well sure. and are, are getting prepared to be able to enter kindergarten when the time is right. Um, but also as an opportunity for um, a professional pathway. Um, and you know, we part of the goal here is to is to figure out the right structure to provide the training and support for residents to become some of those employees. And we will be partnering with the Curry School at UVA um, as part of that training opportunity too. Nice. So this is a, a con continuation of you know everybody winning to solve a problem. Um, have, was has there been any discussion about? I, I I despise this term, but it's it's descriptive. Um, attacking some food desert issues there? Is there any thoughts about that? I mean, we're going to have a ton of folks now living here. Where are they going to go food shopping? And we should describe uh, what now, a food I, desert is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so um, it's a really complex answer. Sure. Uh, and, and I actually want to answer it by pulling back for a moment. Sure, um, of course. And so one of the beauty things about this show, it's a long format. Right, yeah, right. right. So we have no your, commercial breaks. No, yeah. so you yeah. take your yeah. time, yeah. however you, whatever pace you wish to go. It's not a two-minute segment on the news. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, the challenges that I'm talking about that uh, mm -hmm. families at Friendship Court face are the same challenges that um, families in public housing face and that other families who aren't in either of those communities but are, are struggling to make ends meet in our community face. One of those is access to affordable, high-quality early childhood. Mm -hmm. um, another is um, access to a relatively close food that, that, that it can provide healthy and affordable produce and healthy and affordable sure. other, other forms of sustenance. Um, another is... Transportation, right? Transportation is another uh, big key, which is going to be difficult for us to address in this project, but the others, we, we might have a chance. Another is... Um, uh, a, a, a responsive um, kind of clinic scale healthcare facility. Mm -hmm. And another is a centralized um, sort of financial entity that can support families who are trying to navigate services, trying sure. to find their next step uh, on the economic ladder, that sort of thing. All of those discussions honestly are happening not just about Friendship Court, but at a citywide scale. Um, and that's one of the things that I've been really excited about over the last couple of years is the emerging partner dialogue around mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we address these issues across the board. Um, so right now, we're going to be doing early, uh, high quality early childhood at Friendship Court. But when it comes to the question, say, of um, providing uh, a small scale or neighborhood scale grocery store or a health clinic or what we're talking about as a financial opportunity center, those may happen on Friendship Court in some of those future phases. They may happen nearby on sure. a different piece of land and serve a broader, a broader constituency. Um, so we have to be thinking holistically in that regard. And they would be tied to Piedmont Housing? Not necessarily. So they might be like a strategic might... partnership of some kind? Right. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So um, just as a very brief example, um, uh, LISC, which stands for another acronym here, is the um, Local Initiative Support Corporation. Um, which was originally created back in the 60s and 70s in the post-civil uh, rights era. Um, essentially, there were lots and lots of small um, nonprofit startups at that time trying to do good social enterprise work within their communities, but didn't really have the staff capacity and expertise to, to kind of bring them to any scale. So LISC was a national organization established to try to essentially provide those resources for those local community efforts. Um, it has since become a really fantastic and tremendous uh, mover and shaker in the nonprofit world in lots of different ways. Um, but one of those in the last few years is they've developed a, um, a model called the Financial Opportunity Center, which I said a moment ago, which is essentially a, an amalgamation of financial resources from uh, employment navigation to um, financial uh, literacy and, and uh, coaching practices and benefits navigation, public benefits navigation, all, and then in some cases many, many more additional pieces all in one center so that people can have one place they don't have, they can go and get that information, get that support. For right now, uh, Charlottesville doesn't have a financial opportunity center. Um, we are fortunate in that the president of LISC, the national president, is also on the board of visitors at UVA. Nice. Um, 
and he has uh, his, his specific eye on the Charlottesville area and uh, Piedmont Housing Alliance, um, CRHA, the, the public housing entity, and a few other nonprofits have been in discussion with LISC about how do we develop a joint uh, financial opportunity center model here. That's just one example. Again, get a little bit smarter every time I listen to him. Yeah. And if there's anybody who can really put this together, I, I believe it's Sunshine and PHA and all the organizations. Piedmont Housing. Apologize. Yeah, Piedmont Housing. <laughs> I did not read my notes. <laughs> um, Piedmont Housing. Um, you know, the, Sunshine is really good at this. This, and, and he sits on my regional housing partnership board. And and the reason <clears throat> that we we do this and we created this through the commission, uh, planning district commission, is to do exactly what Sunshine's talking about, right? This big tent approach, bring everybody to the table. Um, and uh, you know, I'm I'm excited to hear about that. I I, I often wonder from my developer brain is, uh, okay, so if I'm living in here, where am I going to buy my apples, right? If I want to feed my children healthy, wh where do I get that from? So I'm happy to hear that that's on the table. Yeah, and you know, um, if, the, if, if it does, so it's using the, the grocery store as an example, if there is a location on Friendship Court where that's gonna happen, and it may not, it may happen in a different location if it emerges in that period, but if it happens on Friendship Court, it would most likely be in phase four. Um, I, was, I, was, I was looking at the great right. blob. And there's, the, you know, the reason for that is, um, you can do housing on top of a commercial space, That's exactly and that would certainly be the thinking. model there because we have to do some affordable housing on phase four, there's no question. Um, but it also is the corner of the site that is closest to the kind of commercial core of sure. the city uh, with larger buildings around it. So, and a grocery store, um, you know, not that I'm an expert in any way, but I've been told this over and over again, grocery stores can't survive unless it is um, you do have a, a broad set of clientele coming to it, which sure. means it has to be responsive to the Friendship Court community and to the public housing community in terms of cost and everything else, but it also has to be appealing and responsive to a broader set of clientele too. Otherwise, it w wouldn't, wouldn't thrive yeah, uh, and survive. The business model needs to work, but yeah. you know, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, New York City. Yeah. I mean, that was just a common thing. You had a corner grocery store, apartments up right. above it you know, six, seven block radius, that's what you went to, and you got your fresh produce and food, and right. you didn't go to Whole Foods or, or anything like that. You, wherever you went, you had your little cart, and you went shopping, and you walked up five stories, or your grandmother made you walk it up five stories. Yeah, fortunately, we're past those days now. Yeah, I know. At least here, but... Um, we're going to thank Mike Bittrick, First yeah. Heritage Mortgage, for being a part of the show. Yeah, again, this is a new construction month, and uh, you know Mike does a lot of awesome things, but he rocks on new construction. Kimberly Ann, um, giving you some props. Ray Jordan, Aaron King, Mary Blake, Amanda Langdon, just to name a few. Um, Scott Morris, Julie Ballard, welcome to the program. Michael Thanks. Guthrie, Greg Slater, Ray Cadell, um, thank you for watching us. Um, throw this question. I see Richmond and uh, one delegate watching the program as we speak um there's misconceptions out there that this development that's happening is turning this model into developers coming in and building single family and the whole community is changing you're offering very strong clarity of what is actually transpiring um i'm really excited for this because downtown is clearly spreading that way and you guys are right in the heart of this spread. So I think saying this is maybe the most important development in 20 years, it could be the most important development, you know, since Vinegar Hill, and Vinegar Hill had obviously a, a negative narrative, and this is a positive narrative. Mm -hmm. So I, I just really love what you guys are doing. You're contributing to history. I think we're gonna look, do you think about this? We're gonna look back mm -hmm. on this 12 year period of time and say, this was instrumental in shaping Charlottesville's future. Do you think about that stuff? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> but, it's but, a lot of pressure. But, but, it, not, I think, but not from a, a me, me, me approach. Right. No, right? No, 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 from no, no, no. a house. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, actually not even that. No. Just uh, I think for about everybody. it from, honestly, um, the residents have put their heart and soul yeah. into this process, if and you. they have put their social credibility on the line. They have put their social capital on the line um, because they see a vision they want to see happen. But um, Charlottesville, not any different than any other community, is a land of broken promises. And so um, we, I am fundamentally you know, deeply committed to, to um, 
realizing the residents' vision. Um, but at the same time, there you know any any endeavor like this, there is um, it's there it there it is a, it's a balance of trade offs. Like sure. every decision is. Um, prioritizing one thing over another on some level. And oftentimes there are great synergies that emerge, but inevitably there are some trade-offs that happen. So my uh, hope my, um, is that ultimately the residents look back and feel like this was true to their vision. I mean, it's, That's how I think about it. it. It's well said. It's, it's so important because having something like affordable housing smack dab in the heart of downtown Charlottesville is like a show of hope. Mm -hmm. of like affordable housing can happen in Charlottesville because we're 10.27 square miles, whatever it is, 10 some miles, city of Charlottesville, and we're getting disenchanted. A lot of people are getting disenchanted that we're, and, and I fall victim of this, that we're turning into this like tech hub, this playground of wealthy people, you know, and, it, and it's disenchanting. I love what you're doing. You are giving me hope. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons I do my volaholic stuff, right? I'm on all these different boards and, and one of the, the what my mentality, the way I look at it is, I love to do good things with good people, right? And and the, the residents are good people and, and this is really gonna come out, in my opinion, to be, um, I, I think Sunshine's being- Modest. Very modest. Yeah. I, I think that this is gonna get nationally recognized. Agreed. This is going to get out there. Um, hopefully, this show helps a little bit. I heard we had a delegate watching. We do. So um, maybe that delegate can help push things along a little bit. i uh, love to invite whoever that delegate is to come <laughs> in to sit in that chair right there. And, yeah. And She's she, been on a few times. She has. Cool. Yeah. Well, always welcome on, on the Real Talk show. But in any event, you know, uh, you know we, we spent a lot of time talking about Friendship Court. What other things PHA are doing in the pipeline that maybe would be a great thing to get out in front of some folks? And, we, and anything? I don't. I don't mean to jump in. Can we talk sure. Crescent Halls? Well, no. Go so ahead. Crescent Hall is part of public housing, so yeah. we're not involved in it directly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, well, I, I, can, I think that's an. Excuse yeah. me to interrupt you. No, I fine. think that's an important thing to talk about because we 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 had this conversation over coffee, yeah. and I think it's important for Sunshine to get to to get out again. There's a we're not the same entities, right? Yeah. Two very different things. But, but I will say, just briefly, because I think it's important to say, which is that um, Crescent Hall, around the same time, is going to be, begin their uh, renovation, sure. which is long, long in coming. I think all of us recognize the residents in Crescent Hall um, struggle in the, those pretty wretched living conditions. Um, everyone knows that. And so uh, we are fortunate in Charlottesville as a whole to have received some of the funding. We got some at Friendship Court. Uh, Crescent Public Housing got it for Crescent Halls and for a new project in South First Street. So in some ways, we're actually, in that collective sense, uh, really on the precipice of some pretty extraordinary transformation. Um, to Keith's point, what other, um, I mean, gosh, I, you have your plate full, dude. Uh, what other projects, what else is in the pipeline here with, with Piedmont Housing? Yeah, so um, I mentioned the Financial Opportunity Center is a key piece of, of how we're thinking about taking our existing uh, financial and housing counseling team and leveling that up. Um, so I'm hopeful that will that will develop and we'll see um, some pretty significant prog progress by the end of the calendar year. Um, the early childhood center I mentioned as well. And then um, there's we all know that the need for additional affordable housing, not just in Charlottesville, but in the surrounding region as a whole is critical. So we continue to keep our eyes open and our hands moving as we look at other uh, opportunities for building more affordable housing. And one example of that is um, you may have, uh, some. the listeners may be familiar with uh, Habitat's redevelopment of Southwood, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a trailer park community just south of Charlottesville in, the, in Albemarle County, um, that again is another example of really phenomenal resident-driven design and, and that they're designing the future of their own community. Um, and that redevelopment overall also has a phased process, a phased development process, again, to, uh, to focus on zero displacement. And that development as a whole is going to have a multiplicity of um, housing opportunities on site. And so they will be developing some habitat model, but they will also be doing some market rate housing. In addition, they're, they're aiming to do some additional uh, multifamily affordable housing. So we are partnering with them on that um, and applying for the funding source I referenced previously, low-income housing tax credits, we're, we're applying this March 
And if that comes to fruition, which is not a guarantee, it's a competitive process, um, if that comes to fruition, we'll see uh, construction starting there um, maybe a year after Friendship Court starts. So how can people learn about what we're doing here or what Piedmont Housing is doing, website? Someone at Piedmont Housing just posted on the stream about how to learn. Good. Um, I, I'm assuming it's who you were talking with on the phone, Judah. They said you can visit our website to learn more about this redevelopment process that Sunshine is talking about. And that's probably Tasha Durrett, our communications director, sharing that, which is great. Thanks, Tasha. Um, and Roxanne is giving you props. She oh. said, Volaholic, I am too. Thank you for all you do, Keith. She has some awesome hair. Uh, the, the, More the, than that, she's. she's, I, she's I'm a, just saying. I, I, hair is. She's an it's awesome. It's important to you. It's important to me. She has some awesome hair. Uh, can I ask you a macro question about Charlottesville? We talk about this all the time on this network, and we did uh, an analysis on I Love Seville, and he and I are constantly talking about this. The macro, the future of Charlottesville. We're talking maybe 6,000 new jobs at UVA coming in. We're talking Dairy Central and Dairy Market bringing in two publicly traded Fortune 500 companies. Joffrey Woodruff doing code at the old ice park. Co-construct is coming downtown. Willow Tree is expanding. I mean, new jobs attracting people from outside the community, paying very well, strong wages, flooding Charlottesville over the next five to 10 years. Here's the macro question. What are your thoughts? Because you, you live and breathe this. Where, where's the community heading? With all this, all this so growth. It's not uh, an uncommon challenge when you talk about cities that are, um, I qualify them as boom towns, you know, towns where there is a significant appeal of the new economy, whether that's biotech, new tech. You uh, saw this at Austin, services, right? And I saw it in Austin as well. Yeah. And it's true in Seattle and Portland and lots of other places. And effectively, you get, if we're, if we're not careful, is a barbell effect um, where you have... Uh, very high income jobs and very high income folks in on one end of the community and very low income folks on the other end of the community with not a whole lot in the middle and and also a, a difficult they provide it structures it, it makes it difficult for folks at the bottom end to work their way up um, the there is no silver bullet solution to that, um, but I, and, uh, I know I know Keith's <laughs> fond of the silver shotgun. Silver buckshot. buckshot. Yeah, yeah. I stole it. I totally yeah, no, stole right. it. So. Um, there is no silver bullet, but it has to be thought of in tandem. The housing conundrum is the same, is, is a similar challenge as it is on the employment sector, and we have to be thinking about ways not only to build um, missing middle housing, but building missing middle jobs as well. Yeah. And it's a, my personal opinion, it's a, um, it's a problem in, in cities like ours and like other big cities where, they're, where they focus on trying to bring in those high paying jobs because it increases tax base, et cetera. There's, there's, and it brings in prestige and all of that. But we ideally should be also as much as possibly focusing on providing you know, middle sector, manufacturing, education based, whatever those jobs are to, to provide opportunities for upward economic mobility. So I understand the term city, right? So you region, uh, uh, but this is regional. So when we say the mm -hmm. word city, sure. it, it's I get that's fair. I, I kind of step back a bit yep. because the city's fifty thousand folks. This is Central Virginia. It's a Central Virginia thing, mm -hmm. and that's the reason why um, you know part of my volaholic issue and 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 these regional housing housing partnerships and, and committees and commissions I sit on is because this is more than just Charlottesville. And I know for a fact that, that Piedmont Housing, see, I got it, um, uh, is looking outside in the, the counties that surround the city. So my hat's off to you, and I know you're trying to partner up with some other nonprofits to go ahead and do that. But I just, I just you know, we constantly say city, 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 yep. and it's, it's really only a small portion of the 250,000 people. Yeah, and no, I think that's a very fair characterization. And uh, and again, that's, you know, you can extrapolate that to all the places that I've lived historically sure. as well. And when I was in Austin, we talked about the city, but yes, that was a, a, a core piece of it, but it certainly included the surrounding counties as well, um, because there was no way for the city itself either to address the issue on its own um, or uh, it, it can't be the, the sole partner in that process. It is, it is unsolvable in that condition. Particularly, it has to be. particularly in this case, because it's, it's kind of boxed in. That's yeah. right. That's right. 
Austin's a little different. It had some room it could grow, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. It yeah. does. It is a little bit different. Um, and it is Texas and growth is a... A thing. A thing. <laughs> a thing. Um, so, but, but nonetheless, it, is, it, it has to be a regional conversation. You're absolutely right. So go back to Friendship Court. Um, we're starting in the middle of first phase in the middle of, of sure. this year. Yeah. When do you think that first phase will be completed? So residents should be moving in by the end of 21. Um, it's a year know, and a half, a year and a half. It's, you know, construction of this scale usually ranges between 14 and 18 months, mm -hmm. um, plus or minus. Don't want to get too geekish. Are, are we got site plan process done? And so are we ready? yeah, site plans complete. Um, the, we submit for building permits relatively shortly. Good. Um, and the, the drawings are probably the most set of the most thorough set of drawings the city's going to see because we, we've been. Um, in this process for a while now cool. um, and getting ready for that. Uh, and then that all lines up to a closing in, in the late spring to allow for construction. How has it been working it's with, and we can tie this to like, you know, what we've talked about many times on the show, how has it been working with the city on this? Um, it's uh, wonderful and hard at the same time. So on the, on the, um, on the, positive side, the super positive side, to be fully candid, Friendship Court would not be moving forward were it not for the financial support from the city. There is the, the city has made a commitment to the redevelopment of Friendship Court that in my is certainly unprecedented in the, in the city's history, uh, but candidly is, is probably at a scale relative to the, the amount of money that they have contributed relative to the population is probably at a scale that, that um, is probably unprecedented in the state. Um, and that is, uh, I, I can't thank the city enough for that commitment. So and the in, commitment looking forward to into future phases so as well. So in development, which is what this is, everything is timing. And all the hard work that was done before that, you, I think you've purposely, perfectly timed this. Market is the right place it needs to be. I think you have some really positive uh, folks on the city side of things, particularly on the elected mm -hmm. official side. Agreed. Um, that get it, understand it, um, and help move forward. So I, I think as though there's some struggles with the city um, from maybe process-oriented stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, it, when you get in the nitty-gritty, things yeah. always slow down sometimes. But I, I'm extremely, uh, uh, I'm on a positive note that I just think this, and I'm just looking at this thing at a 44,000-foot level. Hey, I'm going to develop this project. This is just, this is just hit this perfect stride. So uh, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Um, to move to move forward. Agreed. We'll give uh, Pearl certification and Charlottesville Settlement Company. Joe's coming in on the six we're from gonna, Pearl. From Pearl, we're going to announce some really cool stuff. We're, we're, it's going to be difficult. We're two New York, Long Island, Brooklyn boys. He's a great guy. Oh man, I, I, we might talk about Pearl. Maybe not. So we might <laughs> Bill talk Tucker Bagels. and Charlottesville Settlement yeah, Company. Yeah, sure. Yeah, the, the, uh, you know, all rock stars. All rock stars. Did you t uh, tell Sunshine we run the gauntlet? I kind of alluded to okay. it a little exactly. bit. Um, uh, yeah, he, he, uh, he gave me a warning that something was coming. Okay. I said we're going to have fun. Yeah, we do have fun. We fire questions at you. Yeah. Um, just quick one-hitters and get your, uh, your take, the first thing that comes to mind. I will do my best. The, the gauntlet <laughs> powered in part by Mac Weems State Farm mm -hmm. and Marie Bett. Yep. You know, we're, we're <laughs> cheers, Marie Bett. You want to fire away first? No, I think you go first. Okay. Um, so, Sunshine. Uh, how long have you been in Charlottesville? Two and a half years. And two and a half years in Charlottesville, Virginia. What is your take so far on living in Charlottesville and this community? Um, it's the same as I talked about with the city. It is wonderful and hard at the same time. Um, it, the, the, it is a beautiful spot. There is tremendous vibrance and um, community in, this, in, the, in the city. And um, the history is such that it makes any of this work um, really, really difficult um, and it requires us to kind of pull back the veil and the history to get at the root of issues um, to make any progress. And that is, um, it's a necessary, necessary part of it, but it's hard. Good answer. You know, I'm hopeful. Yeah. Best piece of advice you've ever been given and why? Oh boy. Um, I think it's easy to get caught when you when you're when you're going you're going through school you're um, you're told that you have to do things a certain way to be successful. Um, I think the best piece of advice I got was um, 
yeah, kind of generally follow the path, but don't free, be afraid to kind of break off as, as it makes sense for you in particular. And I, that, I didn't really understand that until I probably hit 30 or so when I realized that um, I could make my path my own in a way that, that uh, wasn't previously, I wasn't aware that I could before. So that was, that was the key piece. It's just kind of make it your own. Valentine's Day, you and your better half, if you guys, Emily, Emily if you guys have a uh, favorite um, restaurant and why? Well, we met uh, originally in Bangkok. Okay. Um, and so Thai food is kind of our, our favorite. And to be honest, we actually like going to all the Thai places around here and kind of mixing it up. Um, nice. So Thai food is our, our focus. You like chimp? Uh, yeah. 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 It's good. It's good. Um, but it, it's, it, and, and I, the, we used to be in the situation where we could share plates of food. But I guess uh, in my older age, I, I like the food more and more and more and more spicy. And she's going a little bit the opposite direction, so we can't do that anymore. But How long have you been together? Um, this year in September marks 20 years. Good for nice. you. Nice. Good for you. What do you say to someone who's two years in with Lauren <laughs> and has a two-year-old? We're very much in the thick. Yeah. What advice do you give to someone like us? Uh, whatever hurdles and challenges you see right now, they will fade. Oh, yeah. And the new ones will arise. Oh, and they tend to be more expensive, too, by the way. <laughs> One who's paying for a couple of weddings. But with a pain points fade, you know, yeah. like, and, and you get to look forward to, to, to new opportunities. So I know your uh, passion is photography. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, traveled the world. It was an interesting conversation on the way over. So what, if, if I was to ask you, show me your best picture ever taken, what would it be of? Does that make sense? It does, the, um, but I don't have a clear answer because my interest in photography kind of uh, covers a broad range of subjects from the micro, micro, um, you know, little insect on a flower to macro landscape to people, you know, kind of across the board. Um, but maybe, I maybe the one you're most proud of? So... Um, the ones when I when I look back on kind of where I took photos, maybe I'll answer it this way. Mm, sure. um, when I look back on where I took photos, the most um, compelling part of the photos come to me actually went from uh, when our tenth wedding anniversary went to Alaska and cool. up in Denali National Park in that area, uh, and it was it was it was fun. It was just fantastically <laughs> beautiful, um, and uh, it was just a perfect set of conditions for shooting. You gotta ask them to go too. Uh, I got a couple more if I got time. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna take one from sure, you. Go ahead. Um, a skill. Oh, this is a good one. I love this one. A skill you wish you had that you don't. Um, when I was, uh, I think it was teenager, and at that point, I said to myself, "I want to be um, one of the best hang gliders in the world." Hang gliding. Wow. <laughs> and it's not because I wanted to be competitive, but it's because I wanted to be that good that it felt that easy and and smooth. <laughs> I've never been hang gliding, um, but I just want to be able to like, just fly. No engine, no anything, just fly. Wow. I Pretty, did not that, think that. That is wicked, man. Yeah. Hang gliding. Uh, try parachuting. I've done that. Yes. I've done parachuting. I've done paragliding. Um, but it's... The, Where the can build, you hang glide around here? Can I have no idea. It? I have no idea. Oh, I'm sure, I, I'm sure somebody will know. <laughs> And chime in. On I, mean, it. I, I mean, I think the elevations need to be a little bit higher. higher. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's right. You need to have updrafts. You need to have yeah. elevation. So, um, and I apologize. Uh, uh, so, um, movies. Mm. So, what is your go to movie? So, if you're flipping through a channel or Netflix or whatever it is, if you've seen it a thousand times, mm -hmm. you're going to absolutely stop it and finish watching it. What would that movie be? It would probably be The Dark Crystal. Really? <clears throat> um, I don't know if you've have you seen it. I have not. I heard of it. So it's. I'm uh, Googling it right now. It is, in my opinion, Jim Henson's masterpiece. Oh, yeah. Um, and it is, uh, I find, I mean, the, the, the design, the. Um, the the puppets themselves are just mind blowing. You know, it's it's pre CGI. Obviously, it's mm -hmm. all you know, it's all Jim Henson and puppets, and they are just extraordinary. But for me, the 
the even beyond the just the um, the infrastructure of the movie, uh, it's the story itself that I find really compelling, and it's the only story I can think of that talks about the traditional good and evil, and then by the end of the film, you realize that they are actually part of the same, and that they require each other on some level, um, and that it's it's deep. It's, on the way in, I was thinking, what question can I ask Sunshine that I haven't asked anybody in a long time? And you did not disappoint. I figured we would get some real high level yeah, comments. Uh, we did. We <laughs> got it. Big Big Harry says we both have definitely seen that movie. Really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then Laura says you Meaning cannot. Meaning he and I. He and I. I think he's talking about you and me. <laughs> and Laura says you can't hang glide around here, fellas. It's not. We don't have enough <laughs> elevation. <laughs> um, all right. Two more questions here. The, this a. Uh, Go anywhere you want with this. What is the, uh, what would you, best piece of advice you would give Charlottesville as a community? Um, two things. One, um, we have to be willing to contend with our history and actually, um, and not just in a, in a nodding kind of way, but actually really, really get at it and, and, get at the necessary apology, reparations, whatever it is. Um, and then I think that will provide the platform, the foundation for the ability for real collaboration moving forward. Just be kind to one another. Overall. That's more than that, though. I know that, but that starts it. That starts it's the conversation. It. It's important Because if you can't communicate and be respectful of one another, you're never going to get to where, where you want to get to. That's just my high-level opinion. Should I do my last one? Yeah, yeah, please. I love this. So this is a, this is, I'm going to preface this. This is a bit of a trick question. Okay. So you're on a deserted island. Okay. Deserted island, the middle of, no, middle of nowhere. You're allowed to bring one book with you. What would that book be? Deserted island. That, that's an important part of the question. You're a deep thinker, man. Yeah. I love that about you. I'm telling you, if anybody can make this happen. Oh, it's totally. Happening. Oh. Um, Lordy. It, it's much simpler than what you're processing. <laughs> well, I mean, one book, though, I mean, I have to be able to, like, capture all the emotions, all the, like... Um... You're on a deserted island, sunshine. Don't overthink oh, it. Oh, is this the trick question? Is this the trick part? There's really no right answer. That's right. There's no right or wrong answer. It's yeah. whatever you feel comfortable right, yeah. with. I'm going to say a Dostoevsky novel. <laughs> I'm sure that's the wrong right answer. answer. There is no right answer. We're not. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't want to. Uh, yeah, yeah. You do such good work. I won't do that. Yeah, no, I would on, bring. You, right. I would bring a survival manual. Yeah, that's the marine in him. But that's the jarhead in me. Yeah, because well, he wants to get off the deserted island and live. So, so maybe next time, maybe next time we can talk about this. But there is a part of my history where um, I actually spent a lot of my time learning wood skills and survival oh, yeah. skills. Cool. So, you're um, already there. I don't, I don't need that manual. I'm kidding. <laughs> Were you a Boy Scout? <laughs> no, not Arrow of Light. Different, different. Uh, no, definitely. I don't not. know, brother. I've been through SARS training twice. Yeah. I still would want that. Yeah, no, no, no doubt, no doubt. Manual. So I need to take a personal moment. Yes. Can I do that? Absolutely. Is my wife watching? She is watching. Honey, I love you very dearly. Could not do what I do without you. We have coming up on thirty-four years. I can't wait for the next thirty-four years. We are going out. To see my favorite movie tonight, Casablanca. Casablanca. Nice. I spend too much time with you. I know. <laughs> At the Paramount. At the Paramount, and I'm uh, gonna go eat a little fine French food, and then late, a little later than that, we're gonna watch our dear friend Vincent Zorn. Which, by the way, without him, we would not have this website. Website. Yeah. Website. Uh, play some guitar. Maybe have one or two martinis. So uh, I have to take a nap in the middle of the day. By the way, but but we'll do that. So uh, Christopher Eagle says, "Great author. Love that book." Um, I'm also going to give um, there you go. my wife, Lauren, who's watching right now. I don't know if your wife, Emily, is watching right now. Happy Probably Valentine's not. Day, sweetheart. I love you, Lauren. And in case you are listening, Emily, happy Valentine's Day as well as you. Um, you crushed it. Yeah. You were absolutely awesome. This is, we're, I'll tell you how much we crushed it. We're really supposed to be doing 45 minutes. We did 75 minutes today, and it felt like 15 minutes. Yeah, it went quick. That's a testament to you. You crushed, crushed it. Um, thank You're you. You're welcome back anytime, buddy. Please. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, and look at that. We got screens from the website on there. Judah, making some things happen. Uh, there. Judah. Judah, you hey, Let's good give man. a shout out to Judah Wickpower. Happy Valentine's Happy Day, Valentine's. Judah Wickpower. We Wick love Power. you, brother. 
Um, you can find, for people that are watching the interview and asking where they can watch it, a uh, number of people in totality, we're going to archive it on ilovesevil.com. We're going to archive it on the yesteamrealtors.com. If you go on our website, there's a real talk button. You, uh, we Starting, have, is it now? It's, it's official now. It's up, Judah? Yeah? Okay. Yesteamrealtors.com. Go there. Yep. For two weeks after today's show, we'll syndicate it across the I Love Seville mm -hmm. network. That's 17 Facebook pages, 17 Twitter accounts. We have an e-newsletter that goes out to almost 130,000 inboxes every morning at 11 a.m. The third largest Instagram in the community. We'll turn it into a podcast on iTunes and Apple Podcasts and here. So your, your mug, your smiling face is going to be everywhere for the next two weeks. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Real Talk powered by the Yes Team Realtors. Go online and check out their website, guys. Take care. Thanks, brother. Good work. Hey, dude. You were on point. Seriously. Thanks. Yeah. Like falling off a log, man. Thank you. <laughs> you made it easy. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, that was good.